Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across uh, the country today. Uh, we are being joined this morning by Kayode Ladende, uh, Senior News Editor. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. See you. Let's kick off with stories from the Nation newspapers. Uh, one of the big ones there already says, Southern Governors call for urgent national dialogue. Um, how we will secure Nigeria by NSA, CDS, and IG. Also, attacks on security operatives, a declaration of war, says the federal government. Edo PDP or Basaki at war. Um, Exco reports governor to NWC. Also this morning, why we turned down Mackinday's cash offer by sacked or your council chairman. We can also find uh, on the nation this morning, troops in Boko Haram in Meduguri battle. No Eid prayer at Abuja National Ground, Ramadan um, today, uh, that's on the nation. And also EFCC recovers $153 million, 80 assets from Diziani. Uh, bankers uh, must declare assets, that's also on the nation this morning. NSIA gained $160 billion in 2020, first floating LNG project. And uh, also UTM Offshore signs packed. A few others, Mbaka shot at Ocean Ground for one month and Pasta abducted in Ondo State. Those are the stories on The Nation this morning. On the Nigerian Tribune, the headline reads, Southern Governors meets in Asaba. Ban open grazing, demand restructuring. Wants Buhari to convoke national dialogue urgently. Above the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, how 2023 presidency is splitting the zones. Edo PDP falls out with Obasaki, wants deputy governor to resign for harmonization. Lasu VC, no to non-native Omoiko Pataki, group says. Ramadan, Idelfitri is Thursday. Buhari should resign or step aside, and that's according to the leader of the Afeni Ferry. NSIA grew assets to 772.75 billion naira in 2020. Below the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, insecurity, we are considering restructuring, not separation. That's according to the federal government. Uh, still below the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, uh, FG says 40 terror financiers for prosecution and judiciary to be unbundled. Buhari approves new security measures for Southeast and South South. Those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. And on the Punch newspapers, Indian COVID-19 strain surfaces in Nigeria. Disease Center alerts NCDC. Strain detected in Oshun, Edo. Same with India's different in characteristics. Also this morning on the Punch, convoke national dialogue. South tells Buhari. Oaneze, Afenifere, back governors. Uh, governors condemn armed headers' atrocities, fear food scarcity. Boko Haram scare, National Assembly orders thorough screening of vehicles and persons. And also this morning, moon not cited. Ramadan continues today, says the NSCIA. Ogun, Ogun State businesswoman disappears on way to vigil in Lagos. And also security experts demand probe, raise concerns over villa robbery. We can also see on the Pontius morning a Japanese firm to build Nigeria's first floating LNG facility. And um, Oshun Mosque shot Salapreya's band as Imam's battle for seat. Uh, I think those are the ones that we can share from the Pontius morning. On the Guardian newspaper, 17 southern governors ban open grazing. Foreign investors pull out 1.64 trillion naira from stock markets over insecurity. Women leaders give Buhari two months to convene a national security conference. NSIA assets grew by 193 billion naira as investments in foreign assets appreciate. $100 million lost as NNPC gives bunkering service to foreigners, says SOAN. Adebayo pledges greater interest in youth as Dari is buried. And uh, another story here on the Guardian newspaper. Masab deplores a presidential shoot on site order in Southeast. All right. Uh, good morning once again. And uh, let's now move to Kayo de la Dende. Um, the southern governors, of course, uh, have made uh, all the papers this morning. One of the biggest uh, stories from the last uh, 24 hours. 
Yeah, I, I, I kind of uh, find it quite, um, quite instructive, you know, for news journalists like us. We might look at it, uh, what's the big deal? When these governors make, we only hear some kind of political rhetorics. We only hear things that uh, sounds good, but they are hardly matched with uh, actions. But why I find this very instructive is the fact that uh, there is a man, and permit me if I sound like eulogizing him, and that's the governor of Ondo State. Now, if you talk about any governor who has benefited so well from the center, talking about President Buhari, is this man called Akiri Dolu. And for him to you know, look away from the partisan interest and align with other governors and consider the people that voted in, in and say, I need to be the chief security officer of my state by supporting what everybody in the South, so to say, is supporting. And we need to, you know, sound something very clear here. This is not a divisive move. This is not to say that the South is different from the North. But what they are saying is we are the host communities. You don't tell us how to receive you. You don't give us how to relate with you. We have our rules, and you need to blend with our rules. You need to make this a you know, a win-win situation. It's not that you tell us what should be done at any point in time. So that's why I, I, I like what he is doing. He is leading this whole thing. He is saying that open grazing is banned. And for him to even say, President, you need to address the nation. You know what the president has said, that you cannot compel me to address the nation, I'm talking about the spokesman. So for him to be on a different lane with the president, it's about the urgency of the situation. That's what I found quite interesting. National dialogue cannot be overemphasized. It's needed. You can hear them saying we are considering restructuring and not separation. Obviously, that is yeah. expected. Kaede, <clears throat> this situation, it's not the first time we're hearing different governors in southern states say they ban open grazing. We've heard this time and time again. At what point does it move from making public declarations to actually actions in their states? Yeah, it's quite technical. But for the fact that it's becoming a reality we cannot all shy away from. You know, the president, whom we've been shouting about the state of insecurity, they've had a series of marathon meetings now with the security chiefs. That's to tell you that uh, when you are not proactive, you'll be forced to be reactive. And that's exactly what is going on. Reactive may not be the best option. Proact being proactive is better. So it's a situation where we'll be forced to implement these state laws. Whichever way I know our our f concept of federalism is, is skewed for the fact that the federating unit are not allowed to govern themselves. They decide so many things they do for them. But trust me, we've had the likes of River State Governor who decide how the state should be governed. Yes. When he says there's a curfew, there's a curfew. When he says nobody's moving, nobody's moving. Though he went too far when he said he was going to ban the airspace from people flying. And you know how far he went about it. So I see a situation here when they say Desperate situation demands desperate uh, uh, measures. Uh, measures, and that is exactly what is going on. What is going to happen? The 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 Ondo state governor has no choice. The, all the southern governors have no choice than to ensure that they do not leave lapses. This does not mean that all the elders are criminals or they are about to attack the mm -hmm. southwest, but. Necessary measures have to be put in place to save both the northerners and the southerners in their host communities. Well, but, um, it's, it's also, um, or do you think they, they also have ignored um, um, an angle? The, the headers aren't necessarily, or would you put them as also responsible for the uh, kidnapping and for the banditry, for the attacks on police uh, yes, facilities. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. This has to be looked holistically. You know, there's an angle I saw sometimes, and when I had that kind of debate, a lot of people tried to show it. In the Southwest, I'm, a, I'm, I'm from the Southwest, so I'm going to be very practical here. In the Southwest, we have some Southwesterners, or the Yorubas, as you may call them, who have these cows. Who would prefer that these northerners help them to move around to feed these cows and they will come back to sell it off? In other words, the southwesterners should not be absorbed from this whole open grazing. It is a complicit. Everybody is involved. But what we are saying is if we ban it, whether you are doing it subtly, whether you are behind the scene, you are going to be affected. You've got to change your strategy. You need to have an 
you need to have a ranch. You need to feed your cows because you are selling them. Yeah. You don't have to feed on people. You don't have to make life you know, unbearable for people. So this is not an attack on the northerners. It's not an attack on the elders, so to say, because elders here, yeah, even the person that owns these cows, you know, is also a herder, so yeah. to say. So I think we should look at the big picture. Let's not regionalize this whole thing. Let's see it as a good measure to stop any form of criminality coming from that end. All right. And um, one of the um, decisions that the Southern governors reached at that meeting in as of yesterday was that the government needed to address the nation. And we've seen here on the Punch newspaper that Afeni Ferry backs the government and saying, um, you know, the talking about now. back the governors, insisting that the government needs to convoke a national dialogue. Also, on the Guardian newspaper, women leaders here have given President Muhammad Buhari two months to convene a national security conference. Um, Kaide, how important is it for the government, for the yeah, president this, to address the nation and convene this national security dialogue they're talking about? I, I'm, I'm going to sound, this is not my words now, I'm going to remember some of my friends, some public affairs commentators who had said that, what difference does it make when the president addresses nation? But it is okay for the president to always have an interface with the people. So what do we really need? Is it national address, which I'm not against, or we need day-to-day -day address. You know, that's what happens in other climes. When you have shootings of, in secondary school, in colleges, you see the president coming up to speak. Why the governor is also speaking. They are giving updates. They are telling us this is what they are doing. This is not what they are doing. This is the true situation. We've gotten the person that gunned down the people. Oh, this person has killed himself. Oh, while he killed himself, that doesn't end the matter. They look at the family. They look at the history, and they give us an update. So that's the nation we are talking about. So whether... Afeni Veri or the women group is a microcosm of what a lot of Nigerians are saying. I think that's the way the president should look at it. He should not look at it that all the time Afeni Veri is always on the other side against me. But let's look away from the messenger and look at the message. But like I said, I'm not waiting for a national address. I'm not waiting for a presidential address. I'm looking for a daily briefing. Security of lives is key. And we cannot continue to be hypocritical mm. right. about it. You know, it comes from the president or from um, uh, mm -hmm. the IGF police, you know, governors. Or somebody even the needs chief to be of defense staff or chief yeah. of army staff. We need to, day. and not just, you know, as a journalist, sometimes we get so infuriated with the kind of press releases we get from these uh, mm -hmm. security agencies. Oh, we have deployed this, and it's always about them, you know, neutralizing <laughs> and, and doing yes. these things, and we see them taking some territory. So mm. it's quite appalling. I, I, I want action. We want record. We want names. We want, they've told us they want to start mentioning names of sponsors of uh, terrorism. Been telling us this time and time this again. is, I mean, it's I, better I'm, they I'm, didn't tell us. I, look, I mean, just take a look at just how much Nigeria is losing. Not, you know, beyond the lives that are being killed, the people being kidnapped. On the Guardian newspaper, it says here that foreign investors have pulled out 1.64 trillion naira from the stock market over insecurity. Hmm. This is despite promises from the FG time and time again to prioritize security of, of hmm. Nigerians. Very, very important. I, I, I hope we still have time because there are quite a lot of yeah. issues you talked about. I, I would like to talk a bit, a bit, a bit about politics. You know, when I heard that uh, Edo PDP, they are, yes. the executive, they are work with the governor. And just a few days ago, I was doing a playback of some of the interviews I've had with some politicians on the station. And I remember, in quotes, <laughs> more like uh, a prediction from the former governor of Ikiti State, where he said that, I put it to you, write it down, <laughs> that Obaseki was going to win this election, which he won, and I put it to you that he's going to leave PDP and come back to APC. And I'm waiting. Is this going to come to pass? Because the man of Baseki cannot be gay. I mean, cannot, can, cannot be I'm put gay. in a cage yes. by politicians. This is a full technocrat. This is somebody who, had, who was doing well in the, in the private sector. And so he's not used to coming to his office every morning and call yourself political jobbers and you want to get money from what people have done. 
And a good number of us have been praying for that kind of leaders. So what do we do at this time? We need more of Obasekis. I'm not too sure whether his performance is above average, but we need people who would turn to the people that voted for them and not just select a few who are sharing the commonwealth of the state of the country. So the political jobbers are not restricted to one party. They're in, you know, exactly. Parties, That's why so. I said he moved from APC because some political jobbers wanted to frustrate him, and now he's in PDP thinking it's going to be a better thing. And I'm not calling the executive political jobbers now, but by extension, yeah. we know what it means. I've been covering politics, so I understand that it needs not beyond the dues. It needs to fund the. They call it the mechanism of the party. Yeah. And you know what that means? Your tax, my tax, some of those things, we contribute to the state. All right. Let's, let's quickly talk COVID-19. Um, there's a report of the Indian strain surfacing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm guessing that should worry us. Seriously. Seriously. And, um, you know, when I looked at the new phase of the lockdown, I was a bit worry that what's the record? We don't have such scaring figures like we have in India and uh, maybe by extension some other Asian countries. And I was like, why are we having this? But I think um, uh, uh, time will justify their decision. Let's hope it's not what we see on social media because there's a whole lot of uh, conspiracy theories that government is up to. Uh, 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 they have a kind of funny agenda. They want to you know, they want to die down the issue of insecurity in the country, that it has nothing to do with COVID. But from the look of things, if this information is entirely true, because the NCDC boss is still trying to say it has a kind of similitude with that of the Indian strain, that is scary. Because this is a country where yeah. vaccines are being produced and we are having such huge number of people, you know, confirmed. But I think another part of it is we need to play up the, the, the debt toll. The debt toll is not as high as the way we talk about the confirmed figures. The confirmed figures sounds very scary. I'll give you an example. In sports now, there have been a lot of people who had, had COVID. There's hardly a single death. I'm talking about yes. international football. Yes. <laughs> you understand? That means it's single death. So let's not be so scary. That's why I don't use the word deadly disease. We should, we should know that even if you have COVID, you can come out of it. Just make sure that you, you are you opening up yourself for tests and you do the necessary thing. Those people who had COVID before, some of them are taking their vaccines yeah. and they are safer. Yeah, but so, I believe it's also because of the rate of infection, you know, like it is in India. You let's know, and, and, and if Yeah, and if, 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 that, if they have that, uh, if it has that rate of infection, this particular strain, it means that we're very the likely to also go... Increase. Yeah, and, you know, and of course, and it's, it might be also necessary to, you know, go into a full lockdown because um, of, you know, uh, you know, ways that we need to control it. Um, and that would affect the economy once again, because yeah, people have complained yeah, about know, what they suffered last year. Exactly. And um, that is one of the reasons why I was a bit taken aback, that government has always been considering the economic effect. You know, we went into a recession, which was inevitable because of the, uh, the, the, the spread then. And we came out of it as what to say that, oh, thank God we are out of recession in record time. Now... We are considering lockdown again. Yeah. So what takes priority? I really don't know. Um, it's not the best of time for anybody to be in government at this time. But beyond that, I think it's time for us to come back to that consciousness. I think that's the whole idea. We've lost it. So many parties are going on every day. I dro we drive late most times when we're doing evening news. And we are shocked with what we see on the street. You know, it is full business as usual. Yeah. So probably we need to come back to that consciousness. Mm. And another issue still regarding politics is the federal government here saying that they're considering restructuring, not separation. Do you think... Yeah, I, I, I touched on that. And that, for me, is not news. What is news is the fact that um, they are considering it, they are admitting it, because they've been turning some kind of deaf air. We've had APC set up a committee to look at this restructuring headed by the governor of Kaduna State. Yeah. And uh, the paper has been submitted. So put the paper on the table, even if it's your own style of restructuring. Let's have something better than what everybody has agreed is killed. What everybody has agreed is, 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 is not working. You know, it is not working. One of, some of the reasons why we have many bad roads are due to the fact that 
There is no how federal government can take care of all these roads, devolve this power, devolve this revenue, which is the main thing. They are ready to devolve the, 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 what do you call it, the responsibilities, but they don't want to devolve the revenue flow. Mm. But I think if it is about the people, if it's about the interests of the people, let's have real devolution of power, which is part of restructuring. Let's have state policing. Let's look at things that will make our life more secured and not being reactive, because that looks like being reactive. Yeah. yeah, and the southern governors, one of the things I mentioned was also the state police um, um, idea but once again. Thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very important. I know the fear is jamming. These governors might turn these people to their tools when it comes to election. But the question is, is federal government not also using the security agents as just tool during the election? Yeah. So if the fear is valid, it's not enough not to go ahead. The governor will not be there for more than two terms. So whatever he wants to do, his power fills, I mean, stops at a particular point in time. And at a time, the people will rise and they will have a say at all times. But it, it, all, of, all of this is really, and you know, some of these fears, you know, are, are really just because we lack institutions that... The structure, yeah, exactly. It's not just the structure, the institutions and how they should function. They should function. You know, no, no man should be able to have that much power if we have functional institutions. And so the fears that people are, are you know, expressing now are really just an expression of... A failure of institutions. I totally agree. And so the question is, what comes first? Let's have the restructuring. Let's begin to work on these institutions. And rather than not taking any decision and you're saying you're free, they will, they will abuse the power, they will do this, they will do that, get something started. Right. And that is very, very important at this time okay time okay. is up yes yeah so you know it was a sad one i'm sure you guys must have talked about it a few days ago the death of pastor Adeboe's son and he speaks so much now he's even making a statement talking about the general policy of redeem that it's time to give you a chance you know the young man has achieved so much even in his little stay on health and it's for us to know that let's stop giving excuse Let's take the destiny straight into our hands and see what can Absolutely. become of Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kaiyo Ladende, for Thank joining you. us and for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. We'll take pleasure. a short break. When we come back, we're moving straight to today in history and uh, sharing the things that happened on this day many years ago. Stay with us. <laughs>